Alrighty, now let's go to the bad side of the list, the side of the list that nobody wants to be on, the trash list. And we had three players on the trash list going into week 16. We had Mike Badgley, we had the Steelers offense, and we had Kiki Cutie. So we'll go through, we'll, we'll reevaluate three, these three players, and then we got to make some additions. We've got a couple of them, folks. What do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven trash players. Not good. Um, all right, so let's start at the top of the list. Mike Badgley, we just put him on the cash list. He's coming off the trash list, folks. Very well done. Kind of the game-winning field goal. Um, not a walk-off game-winning field goal, but, you know, 45 seconds left, under a minute. We'll count that as game-winning. Um, and then, so he comes off the cat or the trash list. Now the Steelers' offense did not look good in the first half, but they pulled it together. The receivers were making great catches. Um, Big Ben wasn't turning the ball over. Uh, they were taking their shots down the field. They were kind of opening up the offense. They weren't just dinking and dunking anymore. The running game still wasn't getting going, but every receiver was making it work. Juju Smith-Schuster, number one wide receiver with 96 yards and a touchdown. Deontay Johnson, number two wide receiver for the Steelers, 75 yards and a touchdown. Chase Claypool, third wide receiver for the Steelers, 54 yards, no touchdowns. Then we have Eric Ebron, 47 yards and a touchdown. So, I mean, he was going to all of the weapons. The weapons were doing what they were supposed to be doing, and they put up what? 20, how many points? 21 points in the second half. Very well done. 14 points in the fourth quarter. Once again, very well done. Getting it done when they needed it to. So, I think we can finally say the Steelers offense is back a little bit it. There were, they definitely weren't trash last week. They might have not been amazing and may have even taken, you know, taken them to the second half to get everything going, but it finally showed up, and that's what we've been waiting for. So well done for the Steelers' offense. No longer trash. Alrighty, so the last player on this trash list currently is Kiki Cutie. He was on this trash list for fumbling on the two-yard line against the Colts. Not good. So what did he do this week? Well, let's check it out. Um, Texans versus the Bengals. Let's see what Kiki Cutie did. Five receptions, 54 yards, no touchdowns. Did he fumble? Did he turn the ball over? He did still fumble once. He didn't lose it, though. He didn't lose it, though, so I kind of guess we give the man a little bit of a free pass. And he also caught all of his targets. I mean, he was only targeted five times, and he caught all five for 54 yards. So with all that being said, it wasn't a good performance, but we're not going to count it as trash. But Kiki Cutie, let this be known. We'll put you right back on this trash list. If you fumble again, we'll put you right back on. Um, but, you know, hold on to that ball, my man. So we'll keep, we'll uh, take Kiki Cutie off the list. Um, all right, so, so currently the trash list is empty, which is great. That means there's no trash in the league, but we do have additions, folks, and it's unfortunate. So here we go. The first one, we are, I mean, we got some high-profile names on this list, folks, so don't come at me. Don't come at me. All these players, unfortunately, were trashed this, week's, uh, this week. I don't know what y'all want from me. So the first one, we're going to go to the Cardinals game. Um, very, very inexcusable at home. I guess the 49ers were at home too, since, you know, the, the Cardinal stadium was kind of, you know, their home stadium for the last three weeks. But that still doesn't excuse, uh, this person for playing very, very well, not very well, very, very not well. Um, the, the Cardinals offense, I mean, folks, come on, what the heck was that? 12 points, you're fighting for a playoff spot and you still can't take advantage. Ooh, not great. So. We are going to have to put Kyler Murray on the trash list, and it is, a, is unfortunate. 31 completions, 247 yards, that's dink and dunk, no touchdowns, the interception. The interception came in the fourth quarter. Um, did he fumble as well? No, he did not fumble as well. But the interception, it did come in the fourth quarter, and it did come when they were driving, and it came in the red zone on the 49ers' 14-yard line when they were only down eight points. I mean, this was a one-score game. Yes, they needed the two-point conversion, but it's still a one-point game, and they're down second and 11, down eight points on the 49ers' 14-yard line with four minutes and 42 seconds left, and Kyler Murray throws an interception. That's inexcusable. 
inexcusable. That's kind of trash when the game's on the line, the playoffs are on the line, and you still don't, you know, score. I mean, we can't forgive that. And once again, he's still only going to DeAndre Hopkins to score points. Open up the offense a little bit more, Kyler Murray. He's got to do a little bit more here. Um, so not a great performance by him. The interception in the fourth quarter, not stepping up his play to secure a playoff spot. We got to put Kyler Murray on the trash list, unfortunately. He's got kind of one more week to prove himself or he's going to be left on this trash list for the entire offseason. If a player ends on the trash list or on the cash list, they will stay on that list for the entire offseason, folks. It's kind of our cash and trash list kind of Hall of Fame. We leave them up on there. Um, so, Kyler Murray, hopefully, you know, you can be better next week or get into the playoffs so, you know, you can kind of get off the trash list. Um, but Kyler Murray is trash for this week. Um, all right, now we have to go to the Browns, the Browns, the Browns game. And we're going to add two, folks. We're going to add two players here to the trash list. The first one that we have to get out of the way right now, it's got to be the head coach, Kevin Stefanski. What the heck is this game plan? I don't understand it at all, at all. Okay, so the Browns, they had that COVID outbreak, close contact outbreak, and all the wide receivers were out this week. And Baker Mayfield, Kevin Stefanski, you still let Baker Mayfield, he's the one that's calling plays, folks. Kevin Stefanski, the head coach, he went he went and threw the ball 53 times with no wide receivers. Why would you do that? Especially with Baker Mayfield, who you know is a game manager quarterback. I wouldn't even be throwing the ball 53 times with like Tom Brady or Drew Brees if they have no wide receiver weapons. And you have a good running game and you only ran the ball 15 times and it didn't work I mean what was this game plan I don't get it I guess you could say oh well the Jets knew that all the Browns wide receivers were going to be out so they were going to play the run okay then make the runs a little bit more innovative and a little bit more confusing so you tricked the Jets defense that never came it just never came so Passing the ball 53 times, I don't understand it. Um, so Kevin Stefanski is going to be the first players from the Brown or for the first person on the Browns that is on the trash list. We do have one more. Don't even know how you spell Stefanski, but we'll fix it in post. Alrighty, if that's how it is, I'm very impressed with myself. <laughs> Alrighty. Here we go. The last player, and you know, I get it. It's not all his fault, but um, Baker Mayfield, we're going to have to put him on the trash list and not because, you know, his completion percentage and lack of touchdowns. That's not it. It's the fumbles, folks. He lost all three of his fumbles. That's him giving up the ball. That's not good. First fumble, Jets score a touchdown off of it. The second fumble, um, you know, the Jets score a field goal, so that's 10 points that Baker Mayfield gave up. And now when they still have one more chance to get it done, Baker Mayfield fumbles. And it's not accredited as a, you know, a fumble loss, but it's still a fumble. And they still turn the ball over because it's turnover on down. So, you know, in you know, all aspects, it's still a turnover by Baker Mayfield. So three turnovers against his Jets defense. I mean, come on, you got to play a little bit better than that. Baker, you're going into the playoffs. Teams are going to be better than this Jets defense and you've got to step it up and this is you know like the second time that we've seen you know the Browns Baker Mayfield fumbling the ball late in games on a quarterback sneak we saw it against the Titans when they blew him out in the first half and you know that that fumble made it a one possession game at the end of the day and now the fumble here it loses you the game when you had one last chance you were on the Jets 16 yard line they pick up that first down they could have potentially tied up this game but we'll never know because Baker Mayfield turned it over he caught lost his team 10 points he gave the opponent teams 10 points and Baker Mayfield you know all the pressure was on you this week and you did not step up and that's not great going into the playoffs so Baker Mayfield he is going to have to be on this trash list as well Alrighty, let's keep moving on here in the next one we got to go to the Houston Texans Houston Texans versus the Cincinnati Bengals and once again, I'll probably get a lot of flack for this one, but Deshaun Watson, yes, he had a good game passing, but once again, when it comes down in the stretch in the fourth quarter, when they're down, you know, points here, what are they down officially? 
They're down three officially. Only three points. That's it. That's it. With a minute and 57 seconds left, the Texans get the ball down three. And what does Deshaun Watson do yet again? He fumbles the ball. He fumbled it on the one-yard line against the Colts three weeks ago. He's doing it here against the Bengals. So, yes, you know, your game was good throughout the entire game. But when it comes down to the fourth quarter, when you win or lose the games, you lose the game. Unfortunate. So, Deshaun Watson, untimely turnover here. And it's unfortunately going to have to make him trash for the week. So, Deshaun Watson, not good. Can't keep seeing these turnovers by these quarterbacks, man. You're literally losing the game for your team. Not great. Alrighty, we've got um, three. No, two more, two more, two more. All right, the first one, first one of the next two is going to come from the Colts game. And I cannot wait to put this man on the trash list because he, you know, we've been right about this man the entire season. And then the one week that we go on him, he, he pulls exactly what we've been calling for that he's going to pull all season. So we got to put Phillip Rivers on the trash list. And I am going to take a little bit of joy doing this. The interception in second halves of games. Once again, we're talking about quarterbacks with turnovers at the worst time. Colts officially lost the lead in the second half, and Phillip Rivers has seven minutes left to go. Plenty of time, down four, and what does he do? A very lazy interception throw. I mean, it's first and ten, and he just airs it out into double coverage, and there's no chance that the receiver can get it. Lazy play by Phillip Rivers. We see it time and time again. We saw it all the time last season. That's why the Chargers weren't good. I mean, the Chargers have all the talent that they kind of had last season with this season and Justin Herbert's looking better than um, uh, Philip Rivers here so Philip Rivers you can't fool us forever we knew it was going to come at some point and it came at literally the worst time you're now out of the, out of the playoffs you know you have to kind of win and have some help in to get in you do it against you know the Steelers who have been struggling for the past four weeks I mean literally it's the perfect time for Philip Rivers to do it so we should have seen it coming but we try to give the man the benefit of the doubt and we see what happens when we do that so Philip Rivers not only for a bad performance, but for making us look like clowns here on the show. We've been calling this literally all season, folks. All season. Philip Rivers, officially trash. Alrighty. Um, no, we do have two more. I, I lied. We have two more. So it was three more a couple seconds ago. Um, all right. The next one is going to come from Washington. Now, you may be saying to yourself when I reveal this, oh, this one's unfair. Now you're just picking on this player. And I'm not, folks. He played this week. The trash list is a little bit of a week behind because, you know, of when we do it and how we do it. So, Dwayne Haskins, he's got to be trash, folks. It's unfortunate. He didn't step up. And I know you're saying, oh, he's not on the team anymore. So, he has no chance to, you know, kind of redeem himself. And that's true. So, we'll definitely take him off the trash list next week. But you still played this week, and we still have to evaluate you. It's unfortunate that you're not on the team anymore. But still, this is trash, folks. 14 of 28, 50% completion percentage. When you needed to step up, when you, this could have really kind of clenched them winning the division. And he's still not stepping up. 14 of 28, 50% completion percentage, 154 yards, no touchdowns, and two interceptions. And I think he had a fumble. Let me double check that. He had a fumble loss, so three turnovers by this man while also putting up no points himself. Dwayne Haskins is truly trash. We see it. Not only do we know he's trash, but we kind of get verified that he's trash because Washington just cut him, not even at the end of the season. Couldn't even give the man, you know, a full season here. Cut him right before week 17. So, Dwayne Haskins, officially trash. Alrighty, and then the last addition to this trash list, we got to go to Atlanta and Kansas City. And this is maybe one of the most disappointing trash list people I have to put on the trash list, folks. I mean, we, I kind of praise this man a lot. I praise this man a lot as a kicker. Um, but we've got to do this one. Young Way Koo, what the heck was this, folks? A, um, f uh, Matt Ryan gets you into field goal range, a chip shot field goal for Young Way Koo. Young Way Koo has made like 10 50-plus yard field goals this season. I think he's actually perfect from 50 yards 
um, out. And now he has a chance to tie up the games against the best team in the NFL, the Kansas City Chiefs. And what does the man do? He misses a 39-yard field goal. Now, the only explanation I can come up with is Young Way Koo. He's used to Matt Ryan being so trash and not being able to kind of move the ball in opponent's territory. That's why Young Way Koo has so many 50-yard field goals. So now he has to go in short. He's like, I've got no practice here. I've never been this close. Matt Ryan has never gotten me this close to the field goal. I don't know, 39 yards. What's the trajectory like? I've never taken a 39-yard field goal this season because I'm always 55 yards back. But no excuses here. 39 yards, folks. That's got to be automatic. 40 yards has to be automatic. 50 yards has to be automatic. 55 inwards, I'm telling you all, has to be automatic from a kicker. And Young Way Koo, I mean, he flounders at the biggest time. When they have a chance to tie up the best team in the NFL, defending Super Bowl champions. I mean, Atlanta Falcons has so many kind of blown wins, they could have came back from behind a little bit. I mean, and they still kind of blew this lead. They, I think they were up 14-7 at one point. They were up 14-10, so blew a little bit of a lead, but still, Young Way Koo, truly, truly unacceptable, truly, truly disappointing, truly. Young Ho Koo, Young Way Koo, unfortunate. Alrighty, so the trash list going into Week 17 is going to be Kyler Murray, Kevin Stefanski, Baker Mayfield, Deshaun Watson, Philip Rivers, Dwayne Haskins, and Young Way Koo. How unfortunate for those players. Got to get off next week, folks, if they, if, um, you know, if they want to have a chance to not be on the trash list for the entire offseason.